All right, guys, another beautiful day. Um, you know, again, um, you know, we're in the middle of it now, you know, five straight weeks, uh, five straight conference games. Um, you know, see if we can improve, see if we can improve as a team and, um, you know, play our best football down the stretch. I mean, that, that, that's the goal. So, you know, going to Hawaii, uh, this is my fourth time coaching there. I've been there several times to broadcast different games. Um, we're looking forward to it. You know, it's it's a uh, it's a neat experience for our players. Uh, with that said, you know we're totally impressed what what they have done. You know, they they've added some players uh, from last year's team, which uh, you know, quite honestly, um, um, you know, if they make the field goal at the end of the game. Uh, they beat us, uh, very similar to how they won the game this past week at Air Force. You know, Air Force had the ball in the middle of the field, 15-yard line with the kid and hadn't missed a field goal in two years, and the kid from Air Force missed. And then they came back and beat Air Force. Very impressive win. Uh, but we know we really do. I mean, it, it, it's a challenge. Um, they're three and one in the conference. I think they've won three of their last four games. Uh, they've added some pieces to last year's team. You know, the quarterbacks come in, uh, junior college quarterback. Uh, they've got a freshman receiver, number 45. Um, the running back, uh, 22, I don't remember from last year. Um, you know, big 14 is still the big tall receiver going down the field. They throw the ball vertically. Uh, they've always had, last year I remember, big, good, thick offensive linemen, big tight ends. Uh, so they certainly um, they certainly have the personnel, and they've 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 really had a spark and been energized in the program. Uh, defensively, the defensive coordinator came in from Boston College, um, you know, similar to the model at uh, Michigan that you see right now with Don Brown. Uh, a lot of man to man, uh, a lot of different looks, a lot of pressure. Um, their kicker, who's also their punter, uh, is very good. So. Um, you know, it, 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 it's, it's quite a challenge. It's quite a challenge. I know the environment over there will be one that's very excited. Um, there's a lot of tradition in the program. There, there's a lot of interest in the program. Uh, and they definitely, definitely have a home field advantage playing over there. So I'm excited to go see if we can continue uh, to get better here late in the season. Uh, and it's, you know, it's good to be in games that matter. And that, that was the goal when we came here, and that's certainly, the, that's certainly where we are. So uh, with that said, Rick, you want to start it off? Uh, is there any uh, Chris Alt pistol in the offensive, or is it more of a traditional spread? No, they'll remind you a lot of Nevada last year, uh, very similar. Um, you know, it is the pistol. The run game component of it is the pistol. You know, the tailback back there seems to be deeper. You know, the quarterback on the mesh really rides the mesh. Everything's very deliberate deliberate in the run game, which sets up the RPOs, sets up the play actions where they take the shot down the field. So it'll look very similar to the, the, the Chris Alt pistol. I think the difference is that they really do throw the ball more, throw the ball vertically down the field a lot more. But it's definitely a pistol or gun with the back offset style of offense with the tight end that's the cruiser. Um, very similar to what other teams are doing around the country. Uh, they just throw it more now. You know, they've got a quarterback that I'm really impressed with, very impressed with. What sort of challenge does this trip present with the time change, long plane ride, you guys are leaving Thursday? I don't think that I don't think that's a challenge at all. I, I really don't. You know, these guys uh, are so resilient. Uh, you know, this game starts at 10 o'clock Mountain Time, our time. Um, next week's game against Nevada starts at 8:15 Mountain Time. So you're talking about an hour 45 minutes difference. It's really not that big of a deal. Uh, we do go a day early um, just to kind of get over there because it is a long trip. But it isn't that, you know, it's more um, they're an improved team. Uh, they've got, they've got a, a, a crowd that 
even when they weren't winning, is very interested in the program and very proud of the tradition of the program. It's a tough place to play every time you go over there, uh, more because of what's on the field, you know, not what it takes to get there or what it takes to get to get home. You know, I'm not minimizing that, but I, I really don't think that's that's much of a factor. This is one of those weeks where you really narrow the focus because of the beach and all the distractions, everything that's around you. you know, like that. It is, you know, it absolutely is that, you know, um, you know, we, we went to Rutgers, we left Thursday, um, but we stayed at a hotel that was out near Rutgers, you know, really kind of out in the country with nothing around it. Well, it's, a, it's the same that we're leaving Thursday, but we're staying at a hotel that's right on the beach and right in the middle of Waikiki and, uh, you know, and I think that's all part of it, you know, I, I'd rather do that and you know, I, I let our team, you know, give me a little raised hand of who had been to Hawaii before, and really not that many of them have been there. And I think to, to take them over there and put them at some hotel that's uh, out in the middle of kind of anywhere USA, not that any place over there looks exactly like other places, but, um, you know, we're going to go enjoy this trip, and we're going to we're gonna try to play our best football um, Saturday night. You know, this has been a... As you guys know, you know, it's a, it's a continuation of just trying to build, put ourselves in games that matter. Um, we got over the hump to get back to four and three last week. You know, there's so much invested in this, so much invested that I don't think we would go over there and sabotage our chances of playing our best football. And sometimes sometime you count on maturity of guys and total commitment of guys. But I don't think this football team is going to sabotage itself and take away our opportunity to build on what we've kind of started to build here. Is that just a sign of where you've come as a program? Because I remember year one, you probably talked about this is a business trip. We're just looking a little bit to that, that because it was just your first year with that team. So yeah. Now, is that just a sign of where you've come as a team? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, I think it's that way whatever team I've gone over there with. You know, we went over at Texas A&M and played them early in the morning when it was uh, – they were in the true run and shoot triple option, uh, and it was a handful going over there. Our opening game was at Hawaii early in the morning. Um, you know, then I went over there at Notre Dame, our last game of the year, and we needed to beat them to be bowl eligible. And we played late at night, and it was a unique, unique atmosphere in that stadium. Um, and then we went over here my first year at New Mexico. So each situation's been different, and. You know, it sounds funny, but I'm not sure how you guys do it, but even when I broadcasted, you know, I mean, I tried to, tried to be focused on what I was going over there to do. And, uh, you know, not near, as, not near as focused as you are when you're coaching. I don't mean to hurt anyone's feelings, but it's quite, it is a little bit different. But, you know, you always try to go with a purpose, um, you know, because we all have a job to do and we try to be professional and do the best job we can do. So it's always been a business trip. Um, Arch, I don't know if it was the first year was any different than this year. You came in with uh, North Chow and, and Kimber Ruger and other little uh, What's your reaction to the Ruger's fire? Yeah, you know, it's, it's kind of amazing to me that coaches are let go in the season. Um, you know, particularly at Mountain West Conference schools. Uh, you know, maybe if you're at uh, – um, LSU or something, uh, maybe I guess if you're in the market to go hire the hottest coach in the country or you, you, know, you go that route in that, at that level of football, I still don't understand it, but maybe that somehow is justified. It's hard to imagine in the Mountain West Conference and in these programs that the, the switch is made during the season. Um, I know a coach would never quit on his players. I don't think the players would ever quit on the coach. Uh, so to just yank a guy out halfway through to me doesn't seem the right way to do things for anybody, for anybody. You know, you make a commitment to each other. Um, you know, there, there's a bunch of people, there's a bunch of coaches, there's probably a bunch of players when it was 42-7 against Boise at halftime that uh, maybe wanted to walk out of that locker room and go do something else midstream. But that's not what this sport is all about. That's not what this built, sport was built on. So I'm, I'm disappointed. I, I think finish what you start. I think finish what you start. I, I'm not sure that sends out the best message. Well, let's just go try something else or let's do something different right now. 
Um, you know, maybe we need a little more of this resolve just culturally that if it's not going good, you know, if I'm arguing with my wife, well, let's stay married. You know, let's, let's not just go get a new spouse. Let, let's, let's hang in there and work through this thing and see what happens at the end of the year, you know. So, again, every situation is different. I'm not talking specifically about Fresno, but I, I'm just not sure what kind of message it sends when you say, okay, it's really tough right now. Man, let's just switch directions here. Somebody's at fault for this. You know, let's all try to work together and solve this. Coach, can you just talk a little bit about that, that hit that Daniel Henry had in that game? Yeah. I was talking to him about that because he was saying that it was, it's different than seeing it. He said that when, he, when it was happening, it just felt like he just, the guy came in his gap and just hit him. But when he saw the tape, it was different. Yeah, it was. It, it was a big lick, you know. And there were several big licks in the Monroe game on both sides. You know, our running back took some big hits in that game. Uh, we had two on the quarterback, one by Kimmy. And then Daniels, where he fit up in that hole. And, you know, you always use the word trigger as a coach. You know, when you get that read, trigger, and let it go full speed. And that was probably the definition of trigger right there. Because Daniel Henry, that, that was a lick. And uh, he is a very explosive. You know, he's come in here at 170-some pounds. Now he's 190. Uh, he's changed his body a little bit. But that was, uh, you know, in, in, the, in the football vernacular, if you look up trigger, you know, that, that was what trigger is right there. I do. You know, IB and Santos both practiced this morning. Uh, we had the pitch count on IB. Uh, so I, I, both those guys, I think, will play. Uh, of course, it's always, particularly with the ankle, uh, in IB's case, you know, how do you come back tomorrow? How does it respond? Uh, does it swell up? But, you know, so far, so good on both those guys. The only injury right now that I think will, in fact, I know will keep someone out of the game is Kimmy Carson. Um, he had some concussion type symptoms. So he's entered the protocol. I think his situation right now is a lot like Ryan Santos's was against Boise, where it was kind of a one-week thing. Uh, hopefully, that's the case, and that's what it seems to be at this time. But Kimmy's not going to play this week. We have so many rushing yards. The offensive line has been able to open up some pretty big holes lately. Is it because of scheme, strength, quickness? Uh, what do you attribute it to? I, I think there's no doubt. Um, Schematically, it's a handful. Um, you know, I talked last week, JP, about the same thing happened against the Air Force. You know, we have a lot of different presentations of things, which causes false keys and different keys. And it, it's a handful. That's the first thing. But the second thing is, and the most important thing, we've got some guys that when there's a crack in there, they can take it and they can make you pay. And it always comes down to players. It always, always, always comes down to players. But what we've recruited and how we've built this matches what we do. You know, the, 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 there's, it's, it's aligned. So we've got some little guys that can really go when they get the ball. And our presentation's good, all the above, you know. And we, we've, we've done a good job blocking. You know, I'm not sitting here saying we're, 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 we're but we've made a bunch of improvement. So with anything, it's the combination of things. And, um, you know, as I've said a hundred times, it's a little bit easier on offense because you, you, know, you, can, you can do what you want to do based on your style and the kind of players you get. Defensively, it's a little bit harder. It's, it's, it's a little bit harder. And, uh, but yeah, it's a combination of a lot of things. Most of all, we've got some really good backs that some people would look at and say we're undersized. And maybe that's how they ended up in Albuquerque, New Mexico. But that's kind of been the design of how we've, how we've kind of done this and built this. Do you expect the secondary to get a big test against Hawaii? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, we're into it now. Um, you know, I mentioned number 14, their big, tall, wide receiver, Kemp. Then 45 in the slot, I'm really impressed with, is the true freshman. They've got a, a couple other tall guys, and they've got a couple other quick guys, and they've got two big tight ends, particularly number seven. They will no doubt, because they test everybody vertically down the field. You know, they're, they're going to launch the ball, and it will come down to hanging in there. We're not going to make every play down the field, but we've got to contest every ball. And technique, technique, technique this, work, this week.
flip side of that, you've been able to capitalize on a good return game. In the NFL, you know, there's been a little bit of talk of getting rid of kickoffs and just giving the team the ball to change of possession. Where, where do you kind of stand? Yeah. You've, you've got yeah. Both sides. JP, I think that's, that's a great question. It's one that came up before. It all depends where I'm coaching. You know, if I'm at New Mexico, then everything we can do to maybe spend more time at something than someone else, I'm all for keeping that in. You know, the kicking game, the kicking game, kickoffs, um, that's a big part of our success here. You know, there's some statistics, I think, in our notes over the last five years, what we've done. I think it's what us in Kansas State the most touchdowns in the country on kickoff returns. Um, you know, our kickoff guy is a weapon. I mean, Jason Sanders is an absolute weapon. You know, when the margin for error is that close, those field position situations are critical. They're critical, critical, critical for us. So, you know, and I'm not saying we absolutely spend more time than other people, but it's another area of the kind of outwork, out hit, out discipline of just grinding for everything we can get. So I'd hate to see that component removed from football. And I do think it's an unbelievably exciting play. And before we do anything, let's make sure we have absolute um, documentation and studies of where injuries are really going to happen. You know, let's not just make a symbolic decision. Uh, let's, let's really research it. You know, Rick, honestly, we hadn't been that good this year, being, to being just totally honest. You know, it was something that um, up until probably right now, we, we've not caused anyone to really have a decision on it. You know, Gip had a couple good returns. Gip was explosive. That then Gip comes out. You know, we kind of disappeared a little bit there. You know, we had, uh, uh, you know, we had several teams that kicked the ball down there to us. I, I'll go back to Rutgers. You know, we had several returnable kicks, and we didn't do much with it. You know, we didn't strike fear in anybody like we have done. And um, now that we're back doing it, I think you probably will see more squibs and, and pooches. Uh, but again, you know, and I know this as a kickoff coverage team, you know, you hate to wave the white flag. You know, you just hate to say, okay, we're going to have to pooch it now. It goes against everything you've practiced, right? You'd rather say, okay, let's kick the thing down there and let's go cover. And, you know, we got into that against Rutgers, against their punt return. You know, you just hate to say, okay, man, you get, you're too good. We can't, we can't cover now. We're just going to pooch it. And within that lies that little mind game coaches play with themselves, you know. I mean, what symbol are you sending to your team if you say, okay, we've got to pooch it every time? I mean, really? So, you know, it's, it's that thing back and forth and, you know, which way is the wind blowing, how much confidence do you have in your kicker, all of the above. How helpful has it been to have, like, Diavonzo get so much pressure up front? I was teasing him about him and Dakota talking both of them. He's going to prevent Dakota from getting that tackles record for a fourth straight year. Yeah, Nick is a, uh, man, it's been a journey. You know, I don't, I don't want to go off into a whole thing again, but, um, you know, start to finish of this college football thing and freshmen coming in, and I'll never forget down in Rio Dosa. And Nick was leaving and going home. I mean, he was gone and went home. Went home. And the odds of Nick Devonzo being here now four years, he's had a 3.0 GPA, I think, the last two semesters, is an unbelievable story now. If, if you looked inside that story, I mean, it is a, it's an unbelievable story of where he's come from. And, um, you know, I'm glad to see him, number one, get some recognition going into the season because a couple Mountain West Conference things had him up there as um, honorable mention or second team or first team or something. And then the thing he does, the one constant with Nick, the one constant through all of this is he loves football. He loves football. And that's why he's still here, and that's why I think he's playing his best football of his career right now because through it all he loved football and he has a passion for the game. He practices hard every day. Um, you know, Kaz was on his butt today and walked through. I'm talking about ripping him and walked through. And he accepts coaching and he keeps going. And, uh, you know, I've got a lot of respect for him. He's come a long way. So I don't mean to go into the whole thing. I know you ask a simple question. But, um, you know, the journey of this, the journey of this. I think back to our first year going to Hawaii. 
and uh, Tim Foley over there playing corner. And I think they threw 18 balls, if I'm not certain, maybe more, right at Tim Foley. And I think about Cole taking that thing down the sideline, 75 yards, and everybody said, boy, that big guy's faster than you think. You know, I think about in the locker room after the game, you know, Cole having to stay in Hawaii overnight and, you know, that whole thing. And then next week going to Air Force, right, being up early. Casey Carey takes the first play of the game and then losing two quarterbacks in the first half, and that's all we have. And Lamar Thomas at quarterback. I mean, it's, it's been a journey, man. It's been a journey, and we're, we're not there yet. You know, we got we to gotta keep building, keep building, and keep grinding, you know, so. Apologize about all that, but no, you get my age sometimes. Rick, un Rick <laughs> understands this, right, Rick? No. <laughs> yeah. All right. What else? I know back in the corner, and I know you're waiting now because you usually you usually come in with a boomer right at the end. Now I'm waiting. I uh, learned so much. I mean, it's so odd looking at your statistics. You lead in so many categories, and you're still you know four and three. We're leading in time of possession or rushing games, number one in the nation. Yeah. It's just really our games are odd. We're in conference, we're out conference, we're on the mainland, we're in the middle of the ocean. It's just a really odd season. Yet, you're four and three. You personally, coach, you're almost back to 500 as a career. <laughs> no, considering the lean years you had. So uh, you were talking about New Mexico and all that. Um, how and earlier you were talking about you know all these coaches coming and going. How married are you to New Mexico? Personally, <laughs> I like having you here. You Thank you. Great but how married are you to us? Man, it's, you know, I'm trying to figure out how to cover 14 on that deep ball right now. You know, this is getting kind of, you're pulling a Henry T on me now, right? <laughs> Breaking me down, man, making me vulnerable. No, I think, um, you know, I'm proud of what we've done here. Absolutely proud of what we've done. You know, we're an entertaining team. And we're a competitive team. Uh, we've put New Mexico on the map as far as some pride out there. Uh, and what other coaches and people around this country think of us. So I'm absolutely proud. Uh, I realize we're not there yet. I understand that. You know, it, it's at times frustrating. Um, can we get there? We're going to keep plugging and keep working. Keep plugging and keep working and treat every game like it's uh, Texas, Oklahoma in my world. You know, I'm working as hard as we can and coaching as hard as we can. And uh, who knows? Who knows? You know, I've been married 39 years, so I've never been one quick to make rash changes, right? Um, I hope New Mexico is not one to make rash changes. So let's keep working and let's keep getting this program to where hopefully, hopefully, people expect it to be. You know, I think, what are we, 9-3 and three in our last 12 home games? You know, I've heard a lot about since I've been here, Coach, if you win, they'll come. Well, I mean, we're 9-3 and three in our last 12 home games. So if that means we have to be 10 and two in our next 12 home games, or 11 and one in our next 12 games before they'll come, let's keep working and keep plugging. Let's keep working and keep plugging. And I think everybody realizes what the challenge is here, football-wise. 117 years of football, and what was it, 19 times won seven games, and last year was one of them. So I think collectively, collectively, let's all if we really want, want this, if we really want this here in Albuquerque, New Mexico, then let's collectively all work together to try to make it as good as we can make it and bring college football to Albuquerque. And I'm going to absolutely do everything I can to do that. I've given five years, everything, every ounce I've had to do it. It's not perfect. It's not there yet. But it's hard to have expectations for anybody without commitment. Right? It's hard to say what the expectation should be if you haven't made the commitment. And I think all of us ought to keep that in mind as we move forward. OK? Thanks. I guess that goes with my question, your commitment. I've given everything I've had. I've given every minute to this job. You know, my family is here. Um, my son came. My daughter came. Um, took the bar in New Mexico after she'd already passed the bar in Arizona, came over here, uh, was married here, had a grandson here. Um, yeah, I've given everything I've had to this, given every ounce I've had. And um, 
that's what it should be. That, that's nothing. That's what coaches do. That's why I got back in this profession. But I've not taken one shortcut, and I've not taken one minute off, and I've not done one thing that's taken me away from one thing, making this team and this program the best we can make it. All right? Execution question real quick. Sure. Uh, after the game last Saturday, I asked uh, one of the players, are you guys getting better? Are you able to do more things now? Like maybe open up the playbook a little more because you're more experienced. Yeah. Uh, they feel, yeah. What would be your answer to that? You kind of lose. Well, they always want to open the are playbook there new, up yeah, more. Are there new things that Saturday coming because we're getting better? Yeah, your, your point, though, okay, how do we do this now? You know, we're sitting here four and three. We've got five really good teams to play. We do. It is about each player. Focus, focus, better technique, more fight. That's, that's the extra right there. You know, it's not like sitting around wishing, wanting, hoping, okay, what do we have to do schematically? What do, no, it's about each player right now. What do you really want? What do you really want? And that's what it is. So hopefully we can get better because it all comes down to that. It comes down to technique and it comes down to guys focusing and fighting. And that's what our whole message is. Our whole message is don't make this bigger than it is. Don't make it more complicated than it is. We have to play better. That's all it comes down to. We have to play better. We good? I got one more. Sure. With, with the cold doubt, do you, do you ever think of the uh, situation would present itself where he could get the ball or something like that because of how he used to be a weapon like that with yeah. his legs, the big, fast guy? Yeah, it, 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 it does, man. You know, it, it really does. You know, I think all the time and we think all the time about how can we utilize Cole more. Uh, as you know, Cole has still fought through some injuries here. Um, with the running game as good as it is, you hate to just do something just to do it or experiment or try to reward someone or try. The running game is not our issue or our problem. You know, we're pretty good at the running game. So you don't want to do something and force it. You don't want to force it. And again, it's definitely an option, though. It is definitely an option. And every time I think about him rolling down that sideline over there at Hawaii uh, and some of the things he did out here, you know, it, it, it's definitely, definitely something we consider. Okay? All right, man. Thank you.